Hello, it's Griff, and I am so excited because, I've, as I've, those of you who have followed me before uh, on Humboldt Redwood State Park's page at 3.30 when I do my lives, you know that I've often said I wish that there was more places that had cell phone reception, and so I went looking and I came up to Look Prairie, and I have reception here, and I'm so happy because there are so many things that are awesome here that I'm totally, 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 totally excited. And I was, uh, I ran into the mounted assistant unit, um, horse volunteers, and I interviewed them. And so if you missed that, it's gonna be on the North Coast Redwood, California State Parks North Coast Redwood page, and you can go back and you can check that out. So look where I'm at, look where I'm at. This is Look Prairie. Look at the sky, everybody is celebrating right now. And there is wildflowers out here, and there's, Oh my gosh, there, let me show you this. There is acorn woodpeckers. See those dead trees back over there? Those, they're called snags, dead trees are called snags. There's acorn woodpeckers in there, which is one of my favorite birds, and I didn't know that they were in the park right this close. So this is wonderful. So Humboldt Redwood State Parks is way more than just redwoods. It's grasslands. And so these grasslands here, the hills are alive with the sound of bad singing. These grasslands are very, very old. And grasslands are one of the most endangered habitat types in California because the indigenous people regularly burnt these. And then when um, the colonizers came, they stopped this burning. And what happened was, Doug firs invaded these prairies, and so all this really great habitat and this diversity of plants uh, and animals and stuff like that all disappeared, and then fuels build up and got these big fires. So what State Parks does now is we do controlled burns, and so as I'm walking through here, you'll see some burn marks, and those are for controlled burns, and we're bringing back this grassland. And there's native grasses here, it's just it's amazing, I just love it. So I'm excited, I am so excited to be here. So. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is um, apples. And the reason why is because Look Prairie, uh, one of the first colonizers that lived here, he was a stagecoach driver and he planted apple trees. And those are apple trees down there. Now, these apple trees are way different than the apple trees, the apples that you've had. They're heirloom varieties, which means old varieties. Let me see what's the best angle here. There we go. They're old varieties. And so today's varieties are bred so that they have a long shelf life. So when they get into Safeway or Rayleigh's or wherever, Costco, they can sit there on the shelf for a long time until you buy them. So they're, they're made to like break down slowly, okay? And they're made to be tough and have thick skin so they can pack in a truck. And that's where, that's kind of like what a lot of our vegetables have been bred for now is for shelf life and packing. But back in the day, that wasn't, you grew it and you picked it and you ate it. And so the heirloom varieties often taste better. And so people really want these apple trees. Um, they want cuttings from these apple trees. There's a couple right there and they want apples on them. And if you can beat the bears, they're delicious. What's up, Tavier? Tavier Tarleton, how you doing? And Patrick, my cousin's up on here. This is wonderful. So we're gonna look. See, we're gonna look around a little bit, just because I'm so excited. I cannot believe that I have reception here. So one of the cool things about this area is it's also got oak trees, and oak trees are keystone species, meaning that lots of things depend on them. Not just for the acorns, because you know everybody likes to eat acorns, but um, also because lots of insects, lots of caterpillars, or moss and butterflies lay their eggs on them. So they're like awesome and I'm glad to see them. So we're gonna walk through this big field of gangsta irises. So the reason why I say gangsta irises is because people always think flowers are soft, but flowers are not soft. Flowers are hardcore. So look at these irises real quick. And I talked about irises a while ago on a Facebook Live. But on the irises, if you look real carefully, let me see here. See those little lines, those are nectar guides. And so they have the, the bee goes in there and follows those nectar guides like you know signs saying come here come here oh look there's somebody in there who's that oh that's the sexual organ and so when the bee puts its head in there to drink the nectar that flower is putting pollen on its back little does the bee know that it's being used and we have found out that some nectar 
Recently, we found out that some nectar has drugs in it, nicotine and opiates and stuff like that. And we believe that it's to get, because bees get addicted really fast. And so if you go to, if you go to this, you know, drug dealer, AKA Irish flower, and you, you follow all those nectar guides, all those lines and stuff, and you go there and you drink the nectar, you get a little buzz from whatever drug might be in the nectar, and you get addicted to that, so you keep going back to iris flowers, okay? Because you're covered in iris pollen, and you gotta keep going back to iris, so the, so the, the plants, they believe, ecologists believe, that these bees are getting addicted really fast and they're sticking with the same type of flower all day, which makes sense, because if you went to iris flower and got iris, pollen and then you went to uh you know another flower like madia which we'll see here in a minute um you're not going to make a baby because you you know it's like if you got artificially inseminated inseminated with gorilla sperm you're not going to have a baby that's not going to that's not going to do anything so oh look at here goes bumblebee right there you guys see it doing a saying see why they fly like that now you know why they fly crazy is because they've been drinking them drugs i don't know if that's really true I just like to have fun with the whole gangster flower thing. But anyways, so there's a lot of flowers out here in this prairie and the wind has died down. So we'll just walk around a little bit. I'm Griff, I'm at Humble Redwood State Parks. I'm the interpreter for the Ill River sector. I love flowers, I love plants, I love animals. I love this park, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Not just because of the old growth redwood forest, but also because of the prairies that are out here. So we'll go walk in this prairie. We'll go check it out. So here's another really cool flower. This is called Madia. This is another cool flower, see it? Doing its um, yellow and beautiful thing. Very nice. And then look at this. The hills are a lot and the clouds are kicking too. I mean, what a beautiful day. I am so happy to have reception in another part of the park. And it is beautiful. There's my little electric car that you wouldn't believe it can go all kinds of places. It's, it's tougher than it looks. So here we have a black oak. So there's a lot of different kinds of oaks in the park. And poison oak is not an oak tree. It's got oak-like leaves and they're in the way. So I'm gonna walk around. But that's a black oak, which is pretty cool. So there's some tree diversity here. Here's a madrone tree, which looks like a giant manzanita. And it's got this exfoliating bark, okay? Isn't that interesting? Some ecologists think that the reason why it has this exfoliating bark is because it evolved in a time when there was lots of vines. And so the vines had a hard time holding on to this shedding, AKA exfoliating bark. So this was like an adaption to keeping things from growing on it. Apparently it doesn't work on moss. But, so here's another oak tree. This is a black oak. And you can tell it's a black oak. Can you guys see that? Oh, here we go. Uh, so it's got these deep low leaves, but see those little like teeth on the end of the lobes? That's how you can tell it's a black oak and not a white oak. Cause they look very, the leaves look very similar, but they got those little things sticking out the end. So that's how you can tell the difference. Oh, there's some other, hey Sierra. All right, yes, I am truly blessed to be here. I'm gonna avoid this poison oak though. Oh, look at this little flower. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that thing, look at that thing. Where you at, where you at? Here, we'll look at this one instead. That's called a two spot violet. See all those nectar guards? The dark spots and the yellow spots and those lines, that's all to get the insects to stick their face right in that nectar pit. And then nectar is like, Nectar, nectar is like Red Bull times five. So like, it's such a high bit of energy for pollinators and really gets them buzzing. That was cheesy, I'm sorry, I had to say it though. But they, uh, they go for the nectar and then the plant puts their pollen on them. I mean, I'm just, I'm so fascinated with that relationship. Like how did that, how did that happen? So this is a horse trail. And so here's where the water comes in. And this is from a spring. And never turn this off because, because it's flowing, we don't get mosquitoes. Um, so leave that on, don't turn it off. It's just, it's a natural spring. It does it, it's doing its thing. So let's walk out into the prairie. Man, 
Look how beautiful. Here's another cool flower. This is called blue-eyed oh, gamble doesn't like that. This is called blue-eyed grass. Okay? It's a lily. It's not really related to grass. Grass doesn't have pretty flowers on it. Um and there's a spittle bug. Look at that spittle bug. And I talked about this last week. So that's frothed poop, the spittle bug. Mom, she poops and then she takes her legs and she wiggles them really fast and it frosts that poop and that's how she keeps her baby safe. Isn't that odd? Hey, Sherry. Dirk. What's up, Martha? Latasha, do you do tours when people are allowed to come? Yes, I do. I give walks all, I'll be giving walks all the time as soon as we're done with this COVID thing. Oh, what? can't wait till we're done with this COVID thing. I'm a, I'm an extra extrovert. And, um, <laughs> Latasha, you don't have to pay you. I, I will take you, um, and bring your friends. I'll take your whole family. What's up, Robert and Matt Tucker. Matt Tucker's been out in the woods with me before. So, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, I'm gonna be so glad when this pandemic is over. I know you guys will be too. Man, I'm an extra extrovert. I need friends in my life. This this being by myself thing has been rough. What's up, B? What are you doing? Okay. This B is like, you are walking through my, my, uh, my drug place. So those of you who don't get that reference, um, uh, scientists have found drugs in nectar, like opiums and, and, and opiates and, and, and nic nicotinoids, nicotine. And so that's why I say that because there's an interesting relationship there's a bunch of flowers out here can you guys see all those little blue flowers man how cool so this is not a cool flower i mean it's a cool flower it's called french broom it's an invasive species it uh we have crew we actually have a, a prison crew on the other side of the hill pulling this stuff out because it's so invasive and so i'm going to pull that one out so let's look at this apple tree let's look at this apple tree here so this is a very old apple tree. I'm not sure how old, but probably at least a hundred years old. Um, you can see all these little, see all those little dots on there? So those are sap sucker holes, or it's a type of woodpecker that, um, that makes, makes little holes and uh, they, fill full of, they fill full of sap and then they come back and they drink them out of there. So that's a sap sucker. I haven't seen one in the park, but I know they're here. And I know there's uh, acorn woodpeckers here too, because I just saw them over there and I'm so excited because I didn't think we had them here. All right. So let me just look at your comments here. Hey, Desiree. Yes, it's beautiful. I love this place. This is the most beautiful place on the planet. And um, this is available for you to come hike at. This is your park. So you should come out here and check this out and walk through all these beautiful shishrinkium bellum blue-eyed grass. There's native bees, little tiny native bees in there that don't sting, so don't trip out on little tiny bees, please. They're just doing their little bee thing. And come check this out. And you have reception here, which is just amazing. So please like and share our videos and as soon as you can, come check out the park. This is open for day use, and so you're, you're welcome to come here, park along the road. This is um, off of Matoll Road. So this is right, right down there is the forest with the tallest trees in the world, Rockefeller Forest, biggest old growth redwood forest in the, in the world. And just up from it, a quarter mile, is this oak woodland, big, huge prairie, beautiful place that, is just waiting to, for you to come explore it. So thank you very much for joining me. This is my little electric car that I took uh, on some pretty steep roads today, so I'm proud of it. It did its thing. But thank you guys for joining me, and um, I'll give you one more shot of the flowers. I will be back on again Sunday, and I'm gonna try to do a live stream on those acorn woodpeckers over there. I'm also gonna have Skip from the Yurok tribe with me, so maybe we'll talk about some uh, indigenous perspectives on land management because that's what we're doing out here is we're um, bringing back fires the way that the indigenous people did all right so I'm going to look at your comments hey Susan what's up Margo yeah it was my phone ringing that was my nephew I got to call him back as soon as this is over
Is it okay to walk through prairie like that? Does it harm the vegetation? We encourage everybody to stay on the trails, Reese. Um, but you know, if you, if you just do it once and you don't go in a big group, it's, it should be fine. This is a pretty, this is a grassland. So it's not like the, uh, understory of the redwoods, which is much more, um, much more fragile. Uh oh, Darlene says, I beg to differ. I think my, my home park, Big Sur is more beautiful. Well, you know what? Everybody should think their home park is beautiful, I think. But when it comes down to it, we all know that, um, the Humboldt Redwood is, Park is the most beautiful, but that's that's fine. Y'all can go ahead and think your park is nicer, but we know which one's the, the, really the best. So. so, thank you guys for joining me. I will see you later, and sign, I'll be back Sunday at 3.30.